What are three things you should work on during your season of singleness? The very first thing that you want to work on is your relationship with God. Okay, let me ask you a quick question. If you had a home and you had a garden outside as soon as you walked out, right? Wouldn't you want a beautiful garden? But guess what? In order to get a beautiful garden, it takes work. Some days you may work 18 hours, but guess what? You may have to come home, get down in the dirt and and, pl- and play in your garden and plant in your garden and and. and and, and, and work in your garden. Why? Because you know that you that, that you want a beautiful garden, okay? Your relationship with God, you have to work at it. God is there, but you have to, the Bible says faith without works is dead, okay? Even in the last video, we talked about 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Now, I want you to focus on the very first part of that scripture. If we confess our sins, in other words, God is telling you, look, the ball is in your court. Like, like when you do your part, I'm going to do my part. He said, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of all your sins and purify you from all unrighteousness. OK, listen, faith without works is dead. I told you before, if you were out in the middle of the ocean on a boat, on a little bit tiny red boat. I don't know why. I don't know why I said a red boat, but let's say a green boat. You out there in the middle of the ocean in a green boat. You have two paddles. The paddle on your left represents faith. The paddle on your right represents works. If all you do is paddle with that left paddle, faith. I believe this. I believe this. I believe this. Man, you're going to be spinning around in a circle. All you're doing is paddling left. You you spinning around the middle of the circle. You're running all your energy out. But guess what? When you go left, right, left, right, guess what? You start moving forward. So the, the, the scripture says faith without works is dead. So when you paddle left, right, faith works, you start moving forward in terms of the direction that God wants you to move. You have to step out on faith. OK, so I'm telling you to step out on faith with, with what I'm about to tell you in this video. If you want to grow your relationship with God, if you want to get things right in your season of singleness before your, your next season. Right. Hey, I'm just here to help you, man. All right. Listen, I ain't come to ask you for anything. I came, I came to add something to you, man. All right? Hey, I'm here for you. Bible says iron sharpens iron. So one man sharpens another. I'm here to sharpen you. And guess what? You sharpen me every day. When I see your comments, when I see, you know, all, you know, your support, everything. So listen, I appreciate you. So step number one, you're going to work on your relationship with God. Guess what? While you're single, you have so much more time to pursue the Lord. You still have time when you're married, of course. But you have a lot more time while you're single. Many people say, man, I ain't got, I ain't got time, man, to be to be <laughs> to be talking to God. Man. Let me ask you a question. OK, yeah, you go to work for eight hours a day. That's eight out of 24. Yeah, you sleep for six hours a day. Cool. OK, I'm at uh, 14. That's 14 out of 24. Where, where are all the rest of the time at? People say, oh, I go to the gym. All right, cool. That's that's one hour. What about the rest of the time? In other words, if you really break down your schedule, you'll really realize that you have time. OK, but. You shouldn't have to break down your schedule to find time for God. You should have to <laughs> you should have to uh, prioritize your day around God. You give God his time first, then you map out the rest of your day. OK, many people have it backwards. They want to count the number of hours they work, that they sleep, that they do this, that they do that. Right. But the reality of it is, guess what? You have to make time for God. And even if you did break your schedule down, you still will see that you do have time. OK, you do have time. People make time for whatever is most important. If, for example, if somebody looks on TV and they and they see uh, some new Jordans, guess what? Man, this guy may be the busiest guy in the world, but he going to go and stand in line for them Jordans at, at midnight. Why? He, he, you know, he made the decision. He said, well, look, nothing changed with my work schedule. N- nothing changed with uh, my three jobs I have. N- nothing changed with my wife or my kids. Nothing changed. But I choose to sacrifice some sleep. I know those Jordans come out at midnight. So I'm going to go wait in line from from 8 p.m. to 4 a.m. to get my shoes. And he might say, well, he, he'll go to work the next day off two hours of sleep. But he got his J- <laughs> he got his J's, though. Right. You can't tell him anything. His J's are shined up in the top of his closet. In other words, he he sacrificed for what it is that, that he wants. So when it comes to a relationship with God, when it comes to prayer, when it comes to, to fasting, when it comes to uh, giving up something from, for God, when it comes to seeking him, when it comes to spending time with him. Listen, I'm not I'm not going to sit here and tell you you got to spend five hours a day uh, praying. But I am telling you, listen, start small. Just just go in your in, in your closet or wherever you like to go, 
put in your earbuds and play you a worship song. The worship song may be one minute and 10 seconds. By all means, listen, I'm happy for you. I, like, I applaud you for that. That takes a lot for you to take time out of your day, right, and take that step of faith. Then you may move from one and a half minutes to two minutes, then to three minutes, then to four minutes, then to five minutes. Then you may say, you know what? I, I, I'm going to pray for two minutes. I'm going to listen to a worship song for three minutes. And then, you know, I'm going to spend five minutes l listening to God for what he puts on my heart. Like you just begin to develop a rhythm and a pattern. You begin to, to, to get happy about spending time with God. OK, so step number one, I would say would be spending time with God. Yes, you do have time. All right. You can't fool me. Look, you can fool. You can fool a lot of people in this world. OK, but look, you can't fool me because I know your schedule. I know you got some time over there. All right. You got some time, man. All right. You got some time. I know you. OK. So let's just be real. All right. But anyway, let's get back to the video. Point number two is spend time working on yourself. Many people will say, oh, they, they'll think in their mind, you, he must be talking about going to the gym or doing this or whatever. And that is cool, you know. But I suggest you spend time serving others. Let God use you. Why? Because you serving in terms of giving your time and giving your, your time, your talents, your, your gifts, your possessions, like your money. Like you serving others with this. It humbles you and it also grows you. So you're really working on yourself. Many people will say, well, man, look, I saw that guy at the gas station. He, well, he, he wanted two dollars. I didn't want to give it to him because I already know he's going to do the wrong thing with it. He's going to go and buy this. He's going to go buy and buy some of that. And I'm here today to tell you, listen, you're absolutely right. He probably will do that. But guess what, though? Guess what? What if God is more concerned about working on your heart in that situation in terms of, of you giving than he is about what that man does with the two dollars? This man could go into the store for all I care and, and buy uh, a purple lemonade and go outside and pull and turn it upside down and kick it like that has nothing to do with me. But it has everything to do with what God is doing in my heart through that process of me giving. If that makes any sense. Praise God. Praise God. So, yeah. Point number two, work on you. Let God use you. Be available. Be teachable. Be reachable. Stop going places acting like you know everything. Man, just listen. Learn. Let, like, let God grow you. If you're always talking, that means you have no time to listen. Point number three is to work on your future spouse. And this is what I mean. I know that may be hard to understand. You may say, how can you work on somebody if they're not there? What, what I'm saying is, or maybe I titled it wrong. I'm not sure. I probably should have said, no, no, no. Let, let me let me back up. Point number three is to prepare yourself for what God has prepared for you. OK, so I made a mistake. I, I changed number three, the number three topic. Prepare. Listen, God has to prepare you for what he has prepared for you. OK, so when it comes to, let's say, marriage, Prepare yourself for it. Read books. You know, most importantly, you know, you already know that. Read God's word. Pray about it. Right. Like pre prepare yourself for it. You may say, man, you know what? <laughs> I don't I don't know how to do this. I don't I don't know how to, let's say, uh, make eggs. But I really want to make eggs for, you know, my future uh, wife or husband or whatever. One day, man, go on YouTube. Type in how to make an egg. And they're going to have a little 12-year-old on there with a little, a little video balling the egg. All you got to do is watch the video. I'm going to be honest with you. See, me, I'm not, I'm not a cooker. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a cooker. I just, I mean, I wasn't given that talent. But guess what? Guess what, though? I'm not going to let it stop there. That don't mean, that, that don't mean I'm not going to try. You know, like, hey, I might try to whip up some jambalaya or something one day. And guess what? Man, taste the jambalaya and tell me what you think. If the jambalaya is too spicy, that's cool. Now when I make it next time, I ain't going to put that, 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 that burning hot pepper in there. If it's too dry, I'm going to pour some water in that thing. If it got too much onions in it, okay. Well, look, I ain't going to put a whole onion in it. I'm going to put about one-fourth of the onion in it. In other words, what I'm saying is trial and error. Like you, Whatever you practice at, you become good at it. Man, I am probably the best water boiler in the world. Like, I can literally take a pot 
fill that thing up with water eight and a half minutes on the stove when it's on like the six and a half and look i can tell you right when you're gonna see the very first bubble pop up why because i did it for so long i'm not saying you know i did good with after it boiled with you know making a meal but i i know how to boil that water though okay why i did it so many times okay you can't tell me that you <laughs> how you doing man that's one thing when you make a video man sitting in here uh you sitting here talking to yourself people look at you they think you talking to them when you're doing your little hand gestures and stuff right but anyway let's get back to the video i'm not done talking about my pot of boiling water but man i'm telling you what's the what's the name of that other meal i always make oh a ground turkey ground turkey uh what's the name of it? ground turkey uh green beans mushrooms and some red salsa like i've made that meal so many times but guess what i failed at it the first 20 times but you know what? I ate it every single time. Number one, because I spent my money on it. And I'm like, man, look, you know, I, I I went and got these groceries so I could save money. So I'm going to eat it anyway. You know, I mean, hey, it ain't, ain't going to taste bad. But every time I taste it, I chew that green. I mean, that that, uh, that mushroom would be like, man, this thing nasty. And I say, well, you know what? Let, let me put some more seasoning on it. Like I, I failed so many times till I became better. OK, so. You probably say, why am I telling you all that? I'm saying whatever you practice, you become good at and you get better. Me not knowing how to cook, that's no excuse for me not to try. You may say, look, you may have an attitude problem. Man, don't just don't just sit in a pity party talking about, I got a bad attitude. I got a bad attitude. No, work on that. Work on every time you about to say something smart. Hey, look, just pause. Say, look. Praise God. <laughs> you ain't got to say nothing deep. You don't have to give an explanation to people. You don't have to say something back. You don't have to win it. Just say, look, praise God. <laughs> That's all you got to do. Praise God. Start there. Just start there. That'll give you something to say. Many people, you want to say something back, just say praise God and walk off. Why? Because he going to get glorified in that situation anyway. Right? <laughs> so look, work at it. You got a bad attitude, work at it. Because guess what? When you're married, Man, if you got a bad attitude, it's going to be there in your marriage. Just because you stand up there and say, I do. Listen, when you when you say, I do, then you realize what you did. You're going to be the same person in that marriage. You know? <laughs> hey, I'm just trying to be honest with y'all. Man, my, I hope y'all don't mind. My gas light is on, so I need to get some gas. I'm, I'm not trying to run out of gas. Uh, you know, in the middle of this video, so I'm sitting here, my gas light on. Sorry about that. So you're gonna hear a little gas pump, but uh, yeah, praise God. Look, work, work on those three things, man. Work on your relationship with God. Work on yourself, and work on preparing yourself for what God has prepared for you. Okay, that's all you have to do. Practice praying over your wife. Pray over your wife every single night, even though you may not have saw her before. Lord, I thank you for my wife, or in this case, it may be a husband. I'm not sure who's watching the video. Father God, thank you for them. You know, uh, send your boldest angels to camp around their home, Lord, and protect them while they sleep, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you, uh, you know, you place your, your, your hand over them on a daily basis. Lord, I thank you for your canopy of protection, Lord. I thank you how you are leading them to me and me to them, Lord. How you're going to draw us both together, and Lord, I know that it's going to be for your glory, Lord. I thank you for giving me the desire of marriage father god i thank you for giving them the desire of marriage lord i thank you lord for the for the the kids lord uh, and all the children lord that we're going to raise together father god and, and we're going to raise them father god in ways that they will not uh depart from father god we're going to keep them in your word lord help us to structure them lord like just begin to pray like pray for your future don't wait until you get married to start praying for the person. No, and not, you need to pray for them in advance. In other words, if you're going to drive to New York, <laughs> let's just say you're going to drive to New York and, um, I don't know, you're going to rent out a, a, I don't know, a condo or something for two days. Man, pray over that condo before you get there because guess what? Your prayers are waiting for you right at the front of that condo whenever you get there. Why? Because you, you, you sent them prayers. Cover your wife in prayer. Is she going to get covered tonight? Whoever your wife is. Pray for your future husband. He going to get covered tonight. I don't know. Your future husband might be out there in the club right now dr drinking a, uh, what's the name of them green beers? Not a whiskey. Heineken. 
He might be out there with a Heineken turned upside down, drinking a whole bottle, out there having fun. And you'll, and you'll be surprised. You pray over that man. Listen, God may not be finished with him yet. That man probably take that bottle and slam, <laughs> slam it against the ground and be like, man, I don't know why, but I'm going home. Somebody bring me home, man. I don't want to be here. You never know. You never know who's being, who's being affected by your prayers. So who are you to sit in your bedroom and twiddle your thumbs and play on YouTube all night? Man, cut your, your phone off and pray for somebody because God wants to use you. Pray for your future spouse, okay? So I hope these three things help you. Build your relationship with God. Let God use you to serve. That will build humility. That will build character. That will show you who you are and what you need to work on. And last but not least, prepare yourself for what God has prepared you. Pray for your future spouse. Uh, practice on things that you're weak in, like let's say an attitude or uh, you know whatever it is. I don't know. You may not want. You may not like people being around you. You you know like like just pray about those things. Try to work on those areas. Okay. Hey, listen, I love you. I hope this video helped you out. I need to get some gas over here. Your boy, uh, lights on, but I ain't want to do that in the middle of the video. But, hey, thank y'all for tuning in, man. I love y'all. I will talk to y'all soon. I am praying for you, your future spouse, and for the union that uh, God is going to bring about. Hey, may God be glorified. And always remember, the purpose of marriage is to glorify God. It's not to get what you want. It's not, it's not for the other person to get what they want. It's still about the Lord. And it always will be about the Lord. But guess what? You get blessed in the process because the blessings flow from God. If you worry about doing God's will and God's purpose and God's plan, you you get blessed in the process. Don't chase the blessing. You, you chase after God. See, when you have a pipe, OK, you want to be a pipeline for God, because it, listen, if God can if God can trust you. Right. Let's just say you're a pipe and God, I'm just using an example, but try to follow me, please. If, if you're a pipe and God dumps a gallon of water through you and he's trying to get it through to the other side to somebody else. Right. All the water goes to that person. But guess what? Since you are the pipe, you you get blessed in the process. You're going to be soaking wet in the process. In other words, if you're a giver, you get blessed in the process because God can trust you with it to get it through you. Because God will chuck it to you if he can chuck it through you. But you don't want to have a roadblock in the middle of your pipe being greedy or having uh, false motives. So you get blessed in the process. Focus on being a vessel for God. Just let God use you. I don't know, man. I don't know what way he want to use you. You got to just talk to him. He'll show you. I'm supposed to be getting gas right now. Here I am making a video. I'm sitting here looking at my, my gas light. Gas light sitting here blinking, looking at me. Right on my dashboard. But hey, I just want to be used. I just want this video to go out there and help somebody. You know, even if it's a, a little kid sitting outside of his bed that's confused about things. Hey, man, if it helped one person, look, praise God. All right. I just wanted to put this bug in the air. Whoever it bites, it bites. All right. If it don't bite anybody, it's all right. It's all right. It's going to bite somebody. You know, the bug is going to bite somebody because you know why? It's, it's the Lord that's inside of that bug. I don't have to worry about what the video is going to do. That's none of my business. You don't have to comment. You don't have to let me know anything. It's between you and God. I just want to be faithful to what he has put on my heart. So once again, to recap, focus on your relationship with God. Focus on, uh, you know, serving and letting him build you, which, which, will, build, uh, which will build your humility and which will build you. And point number three, uh, prepare yourself for what God has prepared you in terms of your future spouse. Start working on your reach, your weak areas and start praying for your future spouse, all right? All right, listen, I love you, and uh, I will talk to you soon, all right?